Shalom Aleichem everybody, hope all is well. You are not in control. Are you aware of this? If you're not, man, as we say in the holy language, the time has come. We learn in chapter 42 of the book of Tanya, a very powerful book of our nation, filled with the deepest secrets of Torah, Kabbalah, and Chassidus, that God reigns over this world and all of the worlds. And this is the lowest of all the worlds. We are in the lowest world out of all of the dimensions and realities. And the Almighty is in control and fills all of them entirely. And this world is completely under God's control. Therefore, it is important that you recognize who is running the show here. And even if you decide that you don't want to, God forbid, that you don't want to follow God's laws, so God is still in control, you're in your consciousness, you're going to end up becoming a slave to someone else, whether it's your boss, whether it's a family member, whether it's your own anxieties and fears, your own desires, society. So your best bet, so to speak, to say the least, is to... to, to, to to channel your, your your submission to God. We know that God is in control, but he gives us free will to, 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 to choose that or not. So if you don't choose God, you're going to end up being enslaved to your own self, to your boss, X, Y, and Z. And trust me, that is infinitely painful compared to the infinitely pleasurable reality of being submitted to God. Now, fortunately... When we fear God, we in this very chapter, the altar Rebbe says that we need we must have fear of God. We have to have fear and love of God. But it starts by first having a fear of God, a fear of going against God, rebelling against God, separating ourselves from Him, and that is by breaking His commandments, breaking His laws, hurting another person, you know, giving into our desires when they go against God's will. That is how we rebel against Him. So God forbid. So we have to have fear. We have to recognize His His. His incredible, his awesomeness, his his vastness, his power, his his kindness, and this will create a fear, but an awe as well, like being impressed and obsessed with God, and and fearing being anywhere else besides under His wings, so to speak. So, what I was getting to is fear of God is pleasurable. Fear of your boss is painful. Fear of your parents is a mitzvah, but there's no pleasurable fear but fear of God, so to speak. Because even when you fear your parents, you're really fearing God because it's a commandment to fear your parents. But let's say you fear, you know, a friend that a friend that you're trying to impress, a person, an acquaintance that you're trying to become close to, and you want to be, you know, close to this person, and you fear them judging you, you fear all these things, or you fear, you know, a teacher in school, whoever it may be, a boss, fear of the bank calling, that you owe them money. This fear is a negative, painful, and traumatizing fear. But a fear of God is a pleasurable thing because you know that that is the purpose of reality. You're fearing God and you're comfortable. It's the most calming and pleasurable and comfortable feeling to know you're fearing God. Why? Because then you're becoming one with Him. You're becoming submitted to Him in line with His will. And this fear will give birth to a love. Because it's not enough to just fear God, but you must that fear must also be accompanied with a tremendous love for God, an appreciation for Him, an excitement about Him, recognizing that He is the true reality. There's nothing else besides Him. And He created you. He put you into this world without asking your permission. He put you here, and here you are. So this is a lesson that we, we must meditate upon this idea. We must think about how we are in a world where God is present and He is controlling the world. And He is real and He is conscious and He is infinitely involved in every single aspect of reality. What the Altar explains in yesterday's portion of Tanya is that the more we think about God, the more we force ourselves to think about God and think positive, po positive, positivity and and 
and godly thoughts and spiritual thoughts, kosher thoughts, the more we involve ourselves with these thoughts and we force ourselves, you know, now I'm going to think, tell yourself, okay, for the next three, four minutes, I'm going to think about Hashem and how I want to connect to Him and how I want to be positive. I want to be happy about everything I have. I want to trust in Him and let go of my anxieties, let go of my stress and have faith in Him and, and appreciate Him and think about all the things He's giving me and all the people around me that I'm grateful grateful for that He has connected me with. And the more you think about this, I know you're here, God. I know you're, you're present in every object around me, every aspect of my life. You're there. And it will surely cause you a, a feeling of dedication and, and, and excitement and meaning in your heart. And what the Altar Rebbe says in yesterday's portion of the time is the more you force yourself to do this, you consciously do this, it becomes the natural way you think. You rewire your brain to automatically start thinking more about God and seeing God in all aspects of life. And this changes your whole consciousness, your whole experience, your whole mood, your whole reality, your whole future, because you become bestowed and you become, become in, embedded with godliness. So this is the point. And we have to then take this reality and channel it into very nice, these are very nice emotions, they're very, very nice realities, but how do we ground it? How do we make it consistent? By dedicating ourselves to the Torah, learning Torah, and doing all the mitzvahs, the commandments of God. And these are things that will fill your entire day. Everything you do should be dedicated to God. You get this excitement, you get this inspiration, very good, but how do you keep it? And you channel this inspiration so it doesn't just evaporate. You have to channel it into learning Torah. I'm going to learn more Torah. I'm going to study more f f longer. I'm going to study more than I did yesterday. A few more minutes. Not, you know, not extreme because you want it to be to be something you can continue to do and be consistent and you want it to be realistic. And so you're going to learn a, a few more minutes today than you did yesterday. You're going to dive and you're going to pray a little bit longer than you did yesterday. Say the words a little bit more carefully. Your mother asks you to do something. You're going to be more patient with your mother. That you can be extreme. Being patient with your mother, you don't have to take it. You don't have to go a little bit at a time. You can be fully go extreme to respect your parents. But whether it's your studying and your mitzvahs, you want to do growth. You want to grow every single day. But you don't. You don't want to burn. You don't want to do yourself more than you can, because you. It's better to you know every single day learn three four minutes extra than you did the day before, than to try to learn double you did yesterday and then the next day not learn at all because you're overwhelmed. But so you want to have that positivity growth every single day a few more minutes of learning because those few extra minutes are infinite and and if you see you can do more the altar of also says push it even more once you do those few extra minutes push it even more for learning you know but but do it with with joy because joy is a, is a necessity to really fully follow god's will and all of these things that we are mentioning here are prerequisites to bring the mashiach to bring the messianic era and when the Messiah comes, we're not going to have to consciously t remind ourselves, force ourselves to think about God. We're automatically going to experience an infinite revelation of God. Each one of us now in this time of exile, we all experience a different conscious, a different awareness and consciousness of God. Each person according to their level. But there's an infinite level within each and every one of us, an infinite potential awareness of God that we all can one day reach. That is equal to in everyone. It's an infinite experience and love for God. And that will be revealed in the time of the Mashiach. Now, before Mashiach is revealed, each person experiences God according to their level. Because it's based on our own effort. When Mashiach comes, there's going to be a level that God's going to reveal to us that's going to be beyond our effort. It's going to be an infinite godly revelation. And that is something to think about and to get excited about and to recognize that it's very, very near. We just have to do a little bit more today. And before tomorrow, surely Mashiach will be here, God willing, with the Almighty's help. So let's do a little bit more. To return to our master. Let's take all these steps and bring them into our lives. Very, very important message. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Please, if you can help support the Torah channel, any amount and donation is infinitely appreciated, infinitely valuable to us. Partner with us to help spread God's message throughout the entire world. God bless you all.